You're listening to Discography Discussion, episode 188, Code Orange, hosted by Dan Terry. Let's just tax the bandwidth even more, shall we? I got plenty of it. Jeff Kane. Yeah, I, I do too. It's not like I'd have an issue. <laughs> and Joseph Wren. Harsh working conditions over here. That's what happens when you start your shit. Serve me. Presented by DiscussMetal.com. And if you're out of Code Red, but stocked to the brim on Livewire, then you are ready for this episode of Discography Discussion. I am Joe. That is Dan. That is Jeff. Could we be listening to anything more dirgy and dissonant and harsh sounding than Code Orange this week? Well, I mean, absolutely we could, but we decided to stick with Code Orange because little little peek behind the curtain, kids. That's just the band that we picked for this week. <laughs> yeah, and it was... Uh... A wonderful discovery for me because for whatever reason, I've heard lots of people say, yeah, Code Orange this, Code Orange that. And for whatever reason, when people do that, I guess it's the hipster in me. I'm just like, yeah, everybody else likes it. They can have it. I'll, I'll find something else. Way to be a hipster douche about it. Yeah, was I fucking dumb about that because <laughs> holy fucking shit. Do I love this goddamn band? Yeah, they definitely took us on a journey and in only four records. Yeah, I tell you what, talk about really progressing. Uh, they definitely did that because they went from just this pretty much straight ahead hardcore punk band to just just space industrial metal out the fucking yin yang and just crashed every itch to me, you know, that I needed, man. It was so great. Such an easy, easy set of albums to listen to this week, especially the last two. I am extremely upset that we didn't save this one for December because what better combination for this podcast than space, industrial, dissonance, hardcore. It's like everything everybody likes all at once. Yeah, but the industrial part, that's only one album, really. So I, I can we're good with doing it right now. We'd only if we did a Patreon review of that album in December it would made sense, but no, the the entire discography I don't think would have fit uh, perfectly for uh, December. There's a there's enough of a journey that uh, we wouldn't be able to quote unquote pitch and hold this band like we can with others. Yeah, I agree, and I think that this band is a weird mix of being one of the heaviest bands I've ever heard with being a band that really kind of forged ahead with the whole new metal metalcore thing. Yeah, they uh, they got some chops. I mean, they they've they proved over four albums that y you cannot put them in one particular uh, arena of metal. They they've definitely uh, are very eclectic, and I love the fact that they've been able to take those leaps, and the fact that they're talented enough to make those leaps work is fucking awesome. Yeah, absolutely, they're killer. And I think that one of the biggest things about this band overall is that they had so much like kind of hardcore underground credibility uh prior to them being kind of one of the bigger bands in this genre and so that's really interesting to kind of see their rise to fame uh in such a short period of time i mean you're talking you're talking like 2012 through 2020 in eight years not only have they gone through as much musical change as they've gone through but they've actually become super popular in the process yeah it's pretty crazy uh and it's I'm, it's a journey that's well worth taking. I'm glad we're doing this uh, this episode because uh, there's some really cool shit going on with this band. Well, before Jeff switches gears and takes us on a journey into the world of Catatonia, I'm going to take this time to say thank you to everyone for listening to the podcast. Thank you for listening and for subscribing. If you're not a subscriber, then you can find everything Discography Discussion at DiscussMetal.com. We are on Spotify. Apple and Google Podcasts, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher. So if you have an Amazon Echo or a Google Home, you have no excuse. Ask it to play the latest episode of the Discography Discussion podcast, and it will. We're also on Facebook and on Twitter at Discuss Metal. Be sure to like, favorite, and subscribe. It really helps us out. It lets us know you're listening. And now Dan is going to tell us all about five-star reviews. Well, we love the hell out of five-star reviews here on Discography Discussion. And I'm going to read one for you right now. This is a five-star review on Apple Podcast from Kentucky Bible Incident. It's like hanging out with metalhead friends. Love the show. As the subject suggests, it feels like hanging out with open-minded metalheads talking about your favorite band CDs. Please do, God forbid. By the way, Cannibal Corpse is not a thrash metal band, Joe. You're wrong, but I forgive you. Oh. And by the way, thanks for listening to the show. Everything's a, yeah, I was going to say everything's a thrash metal band, Joe. That's true. We were talking oh. about, uh... <laughs> oh, who the fuck were we talking about? And Joe kept saying, thrash, thrash, thrash. I think it was strong arm. Anyway, I mean, he's not entirely wrong. 
So you're saying I'm not wrong? I'm saying. Oh, we just love to give Joe shit. I'm saying it's you're like not entirely wrong. It's like one of our favorite wrong. pastimes. I'm saying you're only mostly wrong. If you're all wrong, you couldn't be on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so dan tell me about code orange well code orange was a band that started in pittsburgh pennsylvania in 2008 so they're like new guys right because because i mean at my age 2008 was like three days ago and uh they started off actually called code orange kids uh which is where some confusion kind of came uh, because i had no idea that they were called that before because i'm relatively new to code orange uh, so in my initial listen through of the albums, I missed their first release because it was under Code Orange Kids instead of Code Orange. It's kind of a kind of kind of a my bad, but you know it's kind of like uh, kind of like you got the Muppets and then you got the Mupp Muppet Babies. So Code Orange Kids is Muppet Babies. Well, if this is Muppet Babies, this is the show you should have been watching, dude. Because 2012, Love Is Love returned to dust. This is some extreme, dissonant, hardcore, aggressive, I'll say American standards level intensity because that's kind of my definition of what is good hardcore at this point. This is some good hardcore shit, that's for sure. And what I like about it the most is like the higher pitch vocals, the kind of more, um, I don't know, like the, the, the screams are kind of more, more frantic and kind of in your face. I love this because this has aspects of hardcore and metal without actually being metalcore. And, uh, you know, of course, it's going to sound fucking amazing because it was recorded by Kurt Ballou. Yeah, you know, what's funny is this is... Uh, I'm not... The vocals were okay for me on this. But like you said, the, there was something... Um, um, not, not 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 necessarily like an emo emotional, but you could tell that there was something behind the voice that just kind of gave it that extra intensity. If that makes any sense, it it's not like it's the best thing that you've ever heard, but the the delivery, yeah, you you feel it. That's the best way that I can put it. And I really dug it just because of that. It just it kind of it struck me in a way that I wasn't expecting because I'm normally like straight ahead, hardcore punk, uh, that kind of stuff, just not always my cup of tea. Uh, there's only a handful of bands that I actually listen to on the regular that, that are hardcore. And this caught me by surprise, was super happy with it. Yeah, I really enjoyed this one quite a bit as, you know, it's no secret that I'm kind of a fan of this sort of retro hardcore sound. And uh, even though the band themselves is not retro, uh, they kind of kind of Bands like, like Code Orange and even uh, Vane kind of remind me of some of the first hardcore bands that I first started listening to. So, I mean, it's, it, it's got kind of a nostalgia feel for me. Um, I'm into it. I like that it's in and out, 27 minutes, you're done. And uh, it's just a nice little package of brutality. But one of the things I like about it, too, is that um, it almost has more in common with some of the more like emo power violence type bands that were out there at the time. Um, and I like that because it adds kind of an extra layer of unpredictability to the music where, you know, you get to moments that are so intense that they're almost indistinguishable from being grind. Um, and that's, that, that, that was really kind of my favorite part about this is that I really wasn't sure what it was going to do. Um, and it just kind of went off on a, like a bomb in my brain. Code Orange as a band likes to take left turns, and they like to put these layers together that sound random enough. Like, everyone in the room is playing the same song, but they started at different times. And the aggressive, random nature of this record with those hardcore roots, it fits right in, and if the band had stayed here, I would not have been shocked. I'm actually shocked to go back to this, knowing where we're going to be in 2020 after three more releases. Yeah, it is definitely, that's an excellent point. I where could they not started, have predict, predicted that, yeah. Yeah, where they where they start and where they end up uh, is really, you know, to use a different color, out of the blue. I mean, you would not expect it to be like that. So yeah, it was, I think that was part of my pleasant surprise for this band was just how dynamic they are. They are really, uh, they really give it to you. But yeah, this first this first release was definitely raw and unfiltered and just really kind of kicked you in the seat of the pants. And I, I dug it quite a bit uh, just because of, of just how raw it, it felt. And again, a lot of that rawness comes from Kurt Ballou. Uh, recording, right. mixing, and engineering it. The dude is just so punk rock to the bone that like everything, everything he touches is just going to sound like decaying shit, and I love it. Yeah, he's definitely in touch with his primal humanity <laughs> because he brings it <laughs> on everything he produces. Yeah. Well, it's weird to me how he can make stuff sound so disgusting, but at the same time, it'd be very clear. 
and kind of up front. Like that's that's just kind of a talent that he has, and uh, he really brings it out. Really brings it out on this record, and you know the next one too. 2014. I am king. This record is more so. <laughs> if I had to describe it in one word. It would be more so. Did you like the last record? Because this is more so. Do you like (laughs) this record more now that you've actually listened to the first record? Uh, I do a little bit. Uh, This was my introduction to Code Orange. And man, it's just just up your ass heavy. And and, and I love it, man. Like, it, it it is hardcore to the bone. Starts off with strong, hardcore punk drums. It just goes nuts, man. A lot of my favorite bands sound like this, I'm starting to realize. Like, just long, long ringing out on riffs. Somewhat, some songs that somewhat build up and then just go all out of salt on your ears. Like, this is such a far cry from where this band's going to end up. It's almost even hard to believe that it's the same band. But um, they just have a ferocity w- here where they're... It sounds to me like they're just trying to establish that, like, hey, we're not some trend-jumping hardcore band that's just trying to do what everybody else is trying to do. They're emulating kind of the masters, uh, like Converge, you know, or Botch. Maybe not so much Botch, but, um, you know, I don't know, just having that that harder harder edge, like Old Cave-In, like stuff like that. Like the actual roots of what this thing that we call Metalcore actually is. They embody all of that. Yeah, they, these guys, um, I don't know, on this one, it, it just... Uh... The dissonance is like they just turn it up to 11 on this one. The guitars on this are just crunchy and just fucking in your face. I, I like the, uh, quite literally, the Discord. <laughs> I mean, that's what we're recording on. The Discord <laughs> that, that you feel uh, listening to this album is just fan-fucking-tastic. It just, um, if you should feel un- uncomfortable and pissed off after listening to this album, in my opinion. I usually do, but if I'm being honest, that's pretty much my default mood. <laughs> most of the time so uh this is yeah, definitely but, a good soundtrack to that yeah well i tell you what me list, that's not my go-to you know we've already established i'm more the uh the hippy dippy you know melodic pretty shit but this one just yeah whenever i'm having a bad day and i just like fuck everybody fuck the world this is my fucking soundtrack right here man. now i'm this the king is- yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly i mean that's how you feel like you know what just fuck everybody else this is this is me and yeah it's just fucking great one of my favorite things about this record too is just the bass sound how that thing is so up in front in the mix and like just kind of fills the gaps between kind of the heavier parts a lot of the tone of the record comes from that distorted mid-range bass i'm gonna quote scott mellinger on the lesser lights of heaven there is something about this record that just sounds dirty and in the context of code orange that is exactly what you want it to sound like. It's almost got that O oh, sleeper vibe of, I know they're being intense, I know they're being interesting, but something about this just doesn't sound clean. I feel like my ears are being offended, not just at the words or the instruments, but the overall product. Something is just gripping at my ear canals. Yeah, there's a swagger to this album almost. And a creepiness, it, it, too. Like, a psycho yeah. sneaking up behind you with a fucking tire iron uh, ready to hit you in the back of the head, like, any and moment. They're fuck, and they're fucking confident about it, too. That's that's what I love about this. I they do have are, this sweet pompadour. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, just listening to this album is just... It just gives you that arrogance and that, that hype, and you just feel invincible after listening to this album. And you're pissed off at everybody as well at the same time, and you're just ready to just wreck some shit yeah it does its job 100 percent. when i was talking about establishing hardcore credibility or whatever this does that like flat out like nobody's gonna fuck with code orange now they're they're like a legitimate representation of this style and this late into the 2010s that's pretty impressive 2017 forever and now it gets weird (laughs) you mean it gets great i mean it gets awesome but it's still weird weird can be great I just want to say this before we move past it. I like the Code Orange album covers. Somebody in the band is an old school vinyl fan, and they like this idea of big colorful letters that say who the artist is, what the record is, and then you just put a picture in the middle of it. Ladies and gentlemen, unpleasable metal fan. Three, two, one, go. Oh, no, actually, I was just about to say this reminds me a lot of my old, uh, my old, uh, Polish uh, cassette tapes that I used to have that were like bootlegs uh, of death metal albums uh, where they would have 
exactly that. That like the it'd be a tiny version of the cover art with like the band's name in big letters, and then the album name in big letters at the bottom. So yeah, this actually gives me a strong uh, Polish bootleg death metal cassette tape vibe. How's that for a hipster fan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dan wins. <laughs> Hipster tell you death what, metal fan. Yeah. This particular album, the left turn as Dan or as Joe had said earlier, the left turn that they took is great. And they make it work. There's still some hardcore elements, but they've brought in, you know, a lot of industrial feel to it too and it, you know kurt is still work is still the producer on this but the uh, the interesting thing is that they uh will yip is on this as well and that that dude is all over the map uh, i don't know if you guys know who he is but that guy has done everything from like lauren hill to me without you i mean the, you know the guy is just all over the place and it's just really interesting that they he was brought in on this and i don't know if that's you know it's like the yin to the yang kind of feel almost you know like it it makes it work you know there there's so many dissonances in just the, how it's produced how it sounds i like the the female vocals that they're starting to bring in too i know for some people that might be a little uh, uh controversial but i fucking love it I think that largely they started off doing everything that they had done before. So that gives this record that kind of legit hardcore edge that it needs. But before you know it, yeah, they're peppering in kind of more industrial elements, some new metal elements, just some things that you might not be expecting. But it's kind of an interesting compromise because they don't go full hog on any of it. The only thing that they go full hog on is being code orange and being brutal. And they do that 100,000%. They're still unexpected, but then you've got like, like they figured out a profound way to make more types of noise. I guess if that makes sense. Yeah. And I, you know what? I, I think I, I just realized on Bleeding in the Blur, because that's probably my favorite song on this album, that, that it's a dude. That's not a female. I just discovered that. <laughs> I just looked it up. That's hilarious. They have three vocalists, or at least three members of the band that do vocals over the course of their career. And actually, more than one of them has changed roles within the band. You know what? Actually, I might be wrong. It might be the guitarist that I'm hearing uh, in, in the backing vocals. Because she's kind of got a uh, Shirley Manson kind of feel to her voice. Because I love garbage. And I kind of hear a little bit of that in her vocals. I think it's really interesting seeing a band like this start peppering more elements of different styles into their music. Because it would be so easy to just ride the train right out of here. <laughs> And, and But I, I really, really like the need to experiment that's on display here. And honestly, even with all of that, even with all of that in the can, like they've done all these amazing things on this record, I'm still not prepared for what I'm going to get next. Sometime back in April of 2020, we were discussing which albums we were going to discuss on Patreon. For those that do not know, patreon.com forward slash discuss metal, one dollar will get you into that exclusive album review feed. We wanted to talk about Code Orange. We didn't. I'm not sure why. And I really wish we had. Because underneath in 2020, I have no words to describe the audible onslaught that this record is about to bestow. It goes in so many different electronic directions. It's unfair that this is the only record that sounds like this. There needs to be more of this. It's like Author and Punisher is playing old school hardcore, hanging out with the dude from Deadsy. And while we're at it, let's just throw in some Frankenstein girls. And by the way, did you know Fit for a King was here? Oh, you need some extremely dissonant guitars? Well, there's animals as leaders over there. Throw it all together. And this is what you get. What you get is my album of the year. And I don't think it's even close. This is almost like, uh, it's like industrial metal, horror metal. It's just, it's everything. Like, fucking love this album. It, it almost escapes words. It is one of the greatest things that I've ever heard in my life. I love it that much. I almost didn't do the discography because all I wanted to do was just listen to this album. Even though there was four albums, this album is so powerful, so fucking amazing, and just 100% up my alley with it's just kind of horror space themes just fucking going crazy i don't even know what they're even if you're not even listening to the lyrics just musically this would like fit in an amazing just scary outer space movie there are so many movies that this would be the perfect soundtrack for 
You know that one where it's a pandemic or a plague or it's post-apocalyptic and everybody's walking around wearing pieces of leather that they fashioned into old school Western-like outfits and everybody has goggles on and is wearing face masks with respirators that how could there be filters for? But it's a movie. Don't worry about that shit. This is the soundtrack to that movie. Watch Book of Eli and listen to this. You're welcome, Jeff. Yeah, I was. I knew that's where you were going was Book of Eli. I actually went to where another one of our or favorite the bad batch went to and that was event horizon now that's just cheating no event horizon has a very different and much more correct soundtrack jeff <laughs> i know i'm just it can have two no but i'm it just cannot it does look for no me. jeff jeff i love this record <laughs> i do but don't go bring an event horizon into it uh i uh, fine i'll keep it out of my own little brain but God, this shit's so good. This is a really great fucking record, and I didn't think so at first. I'm not going to lie, really? guys. The first time I listened to this, I was like, this just sounds like a bunch of random shit in a blender. And then after like two weeks, I was like, this just sounds like a bunch of random shit in a blender. Yeah, dude. Yeah, man. <laughs> like, I'm into this now. Uh, but it does. It absolutely has way too much stuff going on at the same time. But that doesn't make it bad. It all kind of works. And I think it works in the sense that over the past three albums, Code Orange has set us up to not be surprised by anything. And that's very, very important because we're going to be surprised, but we have to be able to kind of push on. I wasn't expecting as many clean vocals, as many weird electronic segments. But at the same time, the same old Code Orange is still in there kicking your ass. Joe is asking about what is the closest thing to this, and I, I think it actually might be Alien by Strapping Young Lad, because it made me feel the same way. I'll take that. After listening to it as Alien did. It's weird to me that a Roadrunner Records release in 2020 is so fucking original. Because I'm not going to lie, we've been doing this show for a long time, and one word that we really don't throw out that often is original. Like a band that is doing something that we have never heard a band do before. And I will say with Code Orange, they have they've really achieved an original sound that I don't think anybody else even comes close to. More specifically on this record, if you go further back on their discography, you can kind of see their influences on their sleeves. But with this, they have done some crazy shit that doesn't sound like any other band. This doesn't sound like chaotic, chaotic hardcore or deathcore or 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 you know whatever you want to call bo bands like Botch and and Coalesce and stuff like that. They're using elements to make it sound crazy and chaotic that are not traditionally used to create chaos, and it just fucking works. I, I don't know. I can't even explain it. I've been flabbergasted by this record for weeks. Because, like, I feel like it, it's my responsibility to make some definitive statement about it. But to be honest with you, there's certain times I listen to it and I can't make heads or tails out of it. And then there's other times where I was like, oh, yeah, this is the shit that I want. Yeah, the other only Nimic would probably be a pretty good comparison. Some of the Nimic stuff would probably go in line with this. I disagree. This I said some. There's a lot of Nimic out there. Yeah. I know we talked about it, <laughs> but yeah, this, this album is just, it scratches that itch for me, man, that I didn't even know that I had. That's what makes this album so cool for me is how much I love it and how much more of it that I want, never realizing that I actually wanting it, wanted it in the first place. That's when you know you have a really good album on your hands is that it catches you off guard and you end up loving it when you never thought you would love something like this. It's it is it's like savant level just amazing to me. It is, man. It's like pure hipster bait. Okay, so that's why I like it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted no, to, I, to to let you know that that's why you feel that way about this record. Well, you know what's funny is that uh there's so many people that were like this album is amazing. And like our but our buddy John Beatty just for a while there just would not shut up about this album and i'm like well that's cool you know maybe i should finally check him out and i forgot well i mean and when I john Beatty tells me to check something out i'm almost always like delete just the same thing is <laughs> like it's the same as like when jeff recommends me to listen to something i'm like delete well you know john and i uh don't always have the same flavors of music uh because you know he loves Foo fighters and i don't but that's <laughs> that's a story that we've already hashed you're wrong it's but okay exactly i was and he was absolutely right on this this is what else can i say man i mean i'm almost i'm 
quite literally speechless. I can't go into specifics because it's so unique. It's so special. It's so good. It is, unless something magically happens over the next few months, this is hands down my album of the year. It's got the chaos. It's It's got the horror factor. It's got the industrial. It's got the hardcore. I mean, it, they just took everything that was good, put it in a blender, and it came out making the best fucking omelet you've ever had. That was not in some... Why? <laughs> the biggest criticism of all electronic music is that somebody's just pushing buttons and manipulating someone else's music to sound, quote, original, and it's not creative, and you're not a composer, you're not a musician. Even if you agree with that position throw it all out the window when you start manipulating your own music and it sounds like this. This sounds like the last three records thrown together in a blender and then manipulated with all the glorious modern electronics and tricks and chaos pads and whatever you would do if you were creating electronic music in 2020. But it doesn't sound like a remix version of another record. It sounds like it was manipulated just enough to give it that vibe, to give it that horror movie sound. This sounds like what House of a Thousand Corpses looks like. Question for you, Jeff. Yeah. This is your album of the year? It's pretty fucking close so it's far. Not, it's not City Burials by Catatonia? No, it's not. Okay. Shots fired. Inside the house. I just wanted to Please check. go outside and point it at the hill. Oh, my God. No, this record is yeah, fucking I, incredible, though. It is. And I don't really like handing that out because I'm supposed to be, like, critical or whatever. But, like, there's not a lot. Like, I guess the worst thing that I can say about it is it's a whole bunch of random shit in a blender. Uh, but the best thing that I can say about it is the exact same statement. It is different enough for you to take notice. It is something that nobody else is ever going to be able to do without somebody immediately being like, they ripped off Code Orange here. And that's just the way it is. The only other band that I can think of that, that has that sort of domination over a specific sound would be Me Without You. Final thoughts on Code Orange. Jeff. The one thing that I've always gotten from these guys is that underlying current, current of being manic. They just, there's something to them that makes you feel a sense of urgency. And you're not always exactly sure why. And I love that about these guys. And then whenever Underneath came out, it just took that and amplified it to the nth degree and has turned this into one of my favorite modern bands. I love these guys. And if you're on the fence to check these guys out, get off the fucking fence and go buy this album. And then it's okay working your way backwards because it's such an amazing transformation that they go through. But underneath is just a goddamn masterpiece. I mean, what else can I say? I, I just, I love, love the thing to pieces. Dan, what about you? I think it's really interesting how if you, if you start with underneath and you listen backwards, the band kind of eases you out of the insanity of underneath. But if you're listening to this in chronological order, they absolutely do not ease you in. And I think that's the most interesting thing is that like, you've got a good band on your hands whenever they, the weirdest thing that they do isn't that they play hardcore punk. You know what I mean? Like, if if you're listening to them playing, you know, hardcore punk or, or hard, you know, hardcore, like, and that's the normal thing that they do, you've got something kind of original on your hands because you're not going to be expecting what they're going to do next. This band just cannot be generic. It's like a disease to them. So, I mean, I largely agree with Jeff. I would pick up, uh, I would pick up this one or forever. And I will make a distinction here that I do actually enjoy Forever a little bit more than I enjoy Underneath, but I think that's just because I'm a meathead and I like heavy shit. And it's not even that, you know, one's heavier than the other. It's just that Forever is much more hardcore based. So that's just my recommendation. I think that uh, th those two albums are great. You can take or leave the first two. They're fantastic as well, uh, but they're, they really start getting innovative here on uh, Forever and on Underneath. Do you listen to heavy music all the time and for yes. whatever reason you've decided you're bored with your favorites this week? I know that doesn't happen very often, but sometimes it does. Sometimes you're digging through the pile of albums that you know are a sure thing looking for the one that's going to scratch the itch today. If the pile has run dry for no other reason than just trust us. You need to listen to Code Orange because the band has a perfect level 
of chaos and heavy and intensity and brevity. They don't hang around forever on each record. And absolutely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, you need to listen to Underneath first if you've never listened to this band. And if you have listened to this band and you haven't heard Underneath, whatever you think you like or don't like is not correct at this moment in time. I cannot recommend the band enough if only for the newest record, because I think the newest record appeals to the majority of heavy music fans. And if you're a fan of heavy music, you should definitely be listening to Code Orange. Dan, what's your album of the week? My album of the week is Il Nino, Revolution, Revolution. Good fucking choice. Jeff, what about you? All right. I think I'm going to piss some people off with this choice, uh, but I'm going to preface it with something. Uh, I know a lot of people know now that I, I tend to lean... Uh, politically towards the conservative side of things. Uh, with that being said, uh, my album of the week is the self-titled release by Rage Against the Machine. And the reason why is because I'm not happy with in the United States with either one of our choices on who's going to be president. Uh, I've always felt that it's up to the people to take the power back. Uh, I don't like big government. That's why I'm a conservative. I don't want a huge government telling me everything that I have to do. Uh, and I and that's one of the things that I do agree with uh, with Rage Against the Machine uh, in why, as a conservative, they still mean a lot to me uh, because they're about disliking the system, fighting the system and making it better for everybody. Just because my point of view is different than your point of view doesn't mean that I'm OK with the status quo. Uh, so everybody go out there whenever it's time, vote with your passion, vote with your heart and do what you believe is right. Just because it's a two party system, that doesn't mean you have to vote that way. Vote with what you believe is right and vote with your heart and vote with your mind. Don't be a lemming. Don't follow everybody. Blaze your own path. Be your own person and be original. For me, it's bastard luck by the bastard squad. Don Bastard does it again. Even though it's the same record, I still can't get enough of it. I was going to say, didn't he do it the first time? Yes, he did. And then he took a long hiatus and came back. 20 years later. And if you want to hear all about that, you should listen to the Discuss Metal podcast. There'll be a link in the show notes. Way to take the power back, Jeff. Sorry. I had to do it. I'm leaving it in. Don't worry. Take us out, DFT. First of all, thank you guys for listening to our podcast. If you ever want to reach out to us or talk to us in any way, you can do that in several different ways. You can send us an email at show at gmail.com. You can reach out to us on Facebook at facebook.com slash discography discussion. You can send us a message on Twitter at Discuss Metal or just tweet at us. That works as well. You can talk to us on our Discord server, which there will be a link in the show notes that will take you right to Discord. Uh, if you just can't get enough content, you can always check out our Patreon page where uh, we do individual album reviews and uh, a couple of other cool things. Uh, make sure to be checking out the Discuss Metal podcast whenever it drops. And uh, you can always, always, always go to our Teespring store and check out some of our sweet, sweet merch. Link in the show notes and on that note this has been episode 188 of discography discussion thank you for listening you can like us on facebook and follow us on twitter at discuss metal subscribe to our podcast everywhere you listen to podcasts including google play apple podcasts and stitcher visit discussmetal.com for all things discography discussion and please send questions and comments to dan and joe show at gmail.com if you are not a patron, you can become one at patreon.com forward slash discuss metal. We have some sweet perks. Give me your money. The future's not so bright. The only chance is not to waste your life. Have hope and have no fear. The truth walks by your side.